The Little Book of Common Sense Investing is considered a classic in the investing world as it presents a simple, easy and effective investive strategy to grow your money over the long term that can even be automated. The author, John Clifton Bogle, was founder and CEO of Vanguard and the creator of the first index fund, and also strongly preached the reduction of broker fees. In this video we will go over the key takeaways and give a summary of the key ideas Bogle is preaching, but before we do feel free to subscribe for more new book summaries weekly, like the video if you find it informative and share it with a friend if you think it would be helpful to them. The first takeaway is Warren Buffett's story from an annual report of Berkshire Hathaway. Meet the Godrocks family. Thousands of them owned 100th of all of the US stock as a family and they bought all the initial public offerings as they appeared. Gains and dividends were equally distributed so they all received the same share and all grew their wealth at the same pace. After a while some helpers persuade a few smarter family members to sell some shares to other family members and buy some other shares from them in hopes of growing their own wealth faster. Helpers made the transactions possible so they received broker's fees for the service. So stock ownership within the family got rearranged. After a year this caused the share of the market profits family made as a whole to go down. How and why? Well, simply because some of the earnings were paid out to the helpers instead of being reinvested. Also, while they always paid the taxes on the dividends, now some of them also had to pay capital gains because of the fact that they sold shares. The smarter family members realized now they're earning less and conclude that they need more helpers to help them pick even better stocks. After an additional year, the family piece of the pie got even smaller, as the amount of transactions increased, thus increasing the amount of commissions and taxes, and stock gain dropped even more. The smarter family members realized this, so they decided to find consultants that will help them find the right managers who will surely pick the right stocks, as the current ones obviously failed. The share of the pie declined once again. This triggered a huge family meeting where the whole family wondered how did their share of profits decline so significantly, to which their wisest member responds, all the money you are paying to the helpers and the unnecessary taxes are coming directly out of the family's total earnings. Get rid of all the helpers and our family will again reap 100% of the earnings. They did exactly that, redistributed the shares among the family members and followed the old passive but productive strategy which is holding all the stocks and not selling, and the family lived happily ever after. Obviously, this story points out the fact that investors pay too little attention to costs of investing and it's easy to underrate them. Remember, the more the managers take, the less the investors make. Takeaway number 2. The winning formula for success. The author claims that beating the market is a loser's game. Don't allow a winner's game to become a loser's game. The winning formula for success in investing is owning the entire stock market through an index fund and then doing nothing, just stay the course. You will almost never find a fund manager who will repeatedly beat the market, it's better to invest in an index fund that promises a market return but with significantly lower fees. Only 3 out of 355 funds during the 36 years before 2007 edition of the book came out have consistently beat the market. 1 out of 14 funds outpace the market by more than 1% per year and that might change when the fund manager changes. Fund performance is very prone to randomness. Pay attention to the long term performance track for at least 15 years but still changes may occur. It's the job of the brokerage firm, its brokers and financial consultants to sell something every single day. Therefore the author says, don't look for the needle, just buy the haystack. Also the author argues that the whole buy and hold make money slowly by increasing value strategy plus diversifying is exactly what Benjamin Graham was talking about in The Intelligent Investor and that he would also recommend ETFs had they existed in his era. Here is a list of things equity fund returns are damaged by. High costs, contraproductive market timing, taxes, and dividends are effectively lower because of high expense ratios. We already know that investors pay too little attention to the costs of investing and it's easy to underrate them when many costs are hidden from the view, for example portfolio transaction costs, taxes on gains and so on. Also when market returns are high and when investors focus on short term returns, ignoring the costs that build up over a lifetime. Takeaway number 3. 
Tips for picking the right fund Well, for many, financial advisors can give you a peace of mind, help you put together a portfolio matching your risk tolerance and help you stay the course, but they cannot be credibly relied upon to select winning funds for you. If that's one of the reasons you still want to put your money in an actively managed fund, author has some notes for you. These are the 5 options to pick a better fund. Picking a fund with best long-term performance, but that could be a trap. Picking a fund with best recent performance, but that could also be a trap. Get professional advice, which could also be a trap. Select funds with lower costs, minimal portfolio turnover and no sales loads. Or just get an index fund instead. If you ever use advisors, make sure to choose an advisor that chooses your investments purely on your investment merit and not based on what's in it for him. Note that with index funds, expense ratios go down to 0.1% and they have zero turnover rate. Your fund should be your cash cow, not your manager's. We've already established that holding an index fund for a long time is kinda the gold standard of investing. But be careful here also, all index funds are not equal. Some have big expense ratios, some have front-end loads and other costs also. Furthermore, not all indexes track the market. We have bond indexes, growth stock indexes, tech stock indexes, commodity indexes that actually only hold futures, not the underlying commodities and so on and so on. And yes, there are even indexes that try to beat the market. Traditional ETFs are market cap weighted, meaning they are weighted according to the total market value of their outstanding shares. But some ETFs can use fundamental weighting, for example by dividends. In a quote-unquote normal index fund, half the stocks are overvalued, half are undervalued. But who knows which is which? Well, these guys think they do. So they try to make weighting algorithms to buy more of the undervalued stocks instead of those overvalued ones. Takeaway number 4. Business and market returns are closely tied. The author argues that cumulative long-term returns earned by businesses, so dividend yield plus rate of earnings growth, and cumulative returns by the stock market are closely tied. Stock market returns sometimes get over business fundamentals. The author gives late 1920s, early 1970s and late 1990s as examples, but they soon return after falling well behind for a while. For example, mid-1940s, late 1970s and early 2000s. Despite the impact of speculative return in some short terms, there is virtually no impact over the long run. Every annual total return is created almost entirely by the enterprise. Only about 0.1% is created by speculation, so stock returns in the long run depend almost entirely on the investment returns earned by our companies. Emotions dominant in the short term, they simply dissolve. The author argues that P-E ratio pretty much just measures the amount of investors' emotions. Compound return is the ultimate numbers game. Yeah, there are some bumps in the way, but we can get over them. And these are some recommended ways of avoiding investment risks. Diversify to the nth degree. Minimize your investment expenses. Focus your emotions somewhere where they cannot harm your investments. Rely on your own common sense. Emphasize stock market index funds. Carefully consider your risk tolerance. And most importantly, always stay the course. Our last takeaway are the basic rules of humble arithmetic and the conclusions that follow them. We all know that over the long term, stock market returns are created by real businesses, dividends plus earnings growth. We also know that over the short term, returns created by speculation can increase or decrease investment earnings. But in the long run, this effect washes out. So conclusion number one, in investing, the winning strategy depends on owning businesses, not trading stocks. Individual businesses have come and gone in the past, and the failure rate is not likely to decline. The best protection from risks in individual businesses for investors is diversification. Conclusion number two, owning all US businesses through all market index fund is the ultimate risk reduction strategy. But bear in mind that some general market risks cannot simply be diversified away. As a group, all investors in a stock market earn its gross return minus costs. While investors earn the market's entire return, they do not capture all of it. They capture return after all the costs and taxes are deducted. Conclusion number 3. Gross market return minus costs equals to net return to investors as a group. 
While all investors as a group earn the market's net return, mutual fund investors have done way worse over the long term. Conclusion number 4. Gross market return minus costs minus timing and selection penalties equals net return to investors as a group. And now let's summarize. The Gotrax family. The story of the Gotrax family points out the fact that investors pay too little attention to costs of investing, and it's easy to underrate them. We must always make sure to keep as much of our money in our own pockets. The winning formula for success. Beating the market is a loser's game. The winning formula for success in investing is owning the entire market through an index fund and then doing nothing, just stay the course. You will almost never find a fund manager who will repeatedly beat the market. It's better to invest in an index fund that promises a market return but with significantly lower fees. Fund performance is very prone to randomness and a great majority of funds can't beat the market average over the long term even before the expenses. Picking the right fund. Try avoiding actively managed funds. Mutual funds have higher expenses than index funds, and your fund should be your cash cow, not your manager's. Not all ETFs are created equal, and market index funds are your best long-term option. Business and market returns are closely tied. Stock market returns in the long run depend almost entirely on the investment returns earned by our corporations. Short-term emotions simply dissolve. The basic rules of humble arithmetic. All the previous takeaways let us use simple arithmetic to conclude that gross market returns minus costs minus timing and selection penalties equals to net return to investors as a group. Thanks for watching and make sure to get the book and read it or listen to the audio version. I'll leave some affiliate links in the description below so you can also support the channel with no additional cost to you if you want. As a final note, I'll just clarify that this is a summary of a book, it's not investment advice. You should always do your own due diligence before investing and it's your money and you and only you are responsible for the consequences of your own actions. With all that out of the way, I hope you find this video useful, there is one new book summary out every week, so feel free to leave suggestions to which book I should be reading next and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Also feel free to subscribe for more content, like this video and also share it with a friend if you think it will help them. I'll see you next week so enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!